Hey, buddy, thank you for coming tonight. We had uh, thank you. we are uh, a, a wee bit thinner than uh, we were going to be. But some people will drop out because of the weather. Some people guess, are coming a little bit later because they get stuck in the queue. You're live, by the way. I didn't know where that noise was coming from. So first, Larry is going to talk to us a little bit more about the website Spark program, and then uh, I'll be back up for a minute. Then Stuart uh, is going to do this presentation. Then. Uh, anyway, so Larry, why don't you go ahead and do sure. it? All right, so um, I'm going to make this short and sweet. A uh, quick, quick way of introduction. Um, I focus on our partner evangelism efforts in the U.S. So that includes design agencies, hosters, startups, large managed ISVs, and app dev oriented consulting types. Uh, we started BizSpark, uh, which is for targeting for startups, about a year and a half ago. Uh, and we went from zero to over 25,000 startups in that short period of just over a year. Uh, so we took that same model that's worked really well and the Spark name and applied it to web professionals. And that, so that's what this meetup is all about. Uh, and also I thought I'd give you a quick cheat sheet as to some resources that are, might be relevant to you. So are, if, which of you are, are you, are you guys in Website Spark already? Yes? Yeah. No. No? no, I mean, oh, are you talking about web? Website Spark the program? I think I just signed up for Meta. In Meta. Okay, you signed up for Meta. Okay, that's where you're at. You're soaking it. It's kind of like home all. Um, I'm dating myself there. But um, so I'll give you a quick uh, explanation of what the program is. Basically, uh, if you're uh, developing applications, web applications, as well as your business, and you have less than 10 or 10 or fewer employees, you qualify. Woo! So there's not a huge amount of uh, criteria. And then what, what that enables you to get is for no access to the, no cost uh, to get into the program, uh, you get access to Visual Studio Professional, you get access to Expression in both the, the studio and the web SKU, uh, you get access to runtime licenses of Windows Web Server and SQL Server, uh, that's uh, up to, that's capped to uh, uh, four processors per. So basically you can build applications and then get them out into market uh, to reduce, reduce your costs in that way. Uh, at the end of the three year period, uh, there's a lovely parting gift of a hundred dollar fee, uh, which uh, is the, uh, the token amount to represent uh, all the things we would do as part of that. So um, the other program I thought I'd mention has nothing to do with the website Spark, but it's called the Microsoft Action Pack subscription. So again, if you're in the services side of things, uh, that's a great way to get licensed for things like Office, and Windows 7, and those sorts of things. It gives you 10 licenses for that. The cost of that program is $300. It's uh, uh, an annual program, so completely separate from Website Spark, but we realize that Website Spark is specifically to the development of, of web apps, so it's a little bit different than we use. Any questions around those two? Okay. Uh, and then support and training is the second overall uh, uh, offering for Website Spark. You get two professional support incidents. That's, those are uh, initiated through the msdn.microsoft.com site, the same place that you download um, the bits, uh, the, the, the software. Uh, we have a tr training site that's applicable for uh, ISVs, independent software vendors, and um, FDEV consultants in the form of msdev.com. It doesn't cost anything. We keep that up to date. There are hundreds of courses up there. Some of them are 15 minute um, on demand type of things. Uh, some of them are more like an hour, ranging all types of levels. Um, so it's a Web 2.0 type of interface, feel free to check that out. And then the next three things in terms of resources I thought would be relevant if you're building web apps. One is the web platform installer, and that's taking the framework, the database, the, uh, the, the Windows server elements, and basically making it easier to pull all that down and get started very quickly. So think, think of it as a consolidated uh, installation. The, the second one is the common uh, top apps that people use that are uh, web pros. Uh, are provided through the web application gallery. So think of the top ASP.NET apps like .NET Nuke, and the top PHP apps like PH, uh, like uh, Drupal and Joomla. Those are all available there for you to, to get quick access to. And then the third one here is relatively new, or it's, it's had some new updates recently, I should say, is the uh, web application toolkits. Those are specific components that you can leverage as part of your application. Things like uh, the freemium model and how do you take it from 
uh, a f initial free offering to a, a paid offering. There's some, think of them as little patterns and applets that you can incorporate, you know, incorporate search into your site, for example. So that's it for support and training. Any questions on that? All right, and then lastly is, yes. Sorry, one question. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, sorry, you know, I, I'll ask a question after you, after you finish. Okay. No, not about you, know, what you said, so. All right, all right, then I'll just wrap up. Uh, so the business development side of it, as part of Website Spark, you get access to lead generation. Uh, so basically you go to this agency.buildabetterwebsite.com, you indicate that yes, you've got this particular capability. Uh, as customers come in and they have a need for uh, 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 organizations with, who have deployed web servers on Microsoft, that's basically the criteria. You, you report that through Website Spark, you have deployed a web server, and so now we've got that fact that you've got that competency and are able to match you up with customers as they get uh, interest. And there's hundreds of uh, matches that have been made already since we started the program just a few months ago. Um, the second thing is the partner catalog. So off of Microsoft.com slash web, uh, in customers can go search for who's got expertise in Microsoft technologies and specifically find people in Website Spark that have delivered uh, Windows Server solutions. And then lastly is the Front Runner program, which is the last link on there. Uh, that's for uh, organizations that are engaging in early technologies with Microsoft. You can carry the Front Runner badge that has a logo. Uh, there's ready to go marketing materials that you can co brand your uh, go to market materials alongside Microsoft. Uh, so those are, are valuable. The current Front Runner uh, that's active is for Azure uh, cloud computing offering. So with that as a quick cheat sheet, we have this to go back and not have to take down a whole bunch of URLs handwritten, so hopefully that'll be a good reference for you. Any questions about any of this or anything else Microsoft related? <coughs> yes, yeah, and uh, one question about the training, not really training, but um, like open source projects uh, for uh, BSEC Spark. Do you have any, that kind of project or yeah. a site for the members or yes. is it open to public? Yes. Um, so what, the question was around uh, open source projects in context of websites. Yeah, like, like as a developer, yep. you know, yes. you're always you know, curious about you know, what they do you know, to yep. develop specific you know, like technology. The number one place uh, for that is CodePlex. Uh -huh. uh, so that is where we right. put all yeah. Microsoft. You know, I've had people on my team contribute to it. There's teams across Microsoft. Uh -huh. There's community uh, uh -huh. folks that contribute. CodePlex is where we, uh, is, is our preferred location for uh -huh. open source. Questions? All right. Back to you, Brian. I'm going to add one little, one other little small piece of that because there's uh, also a marketing program that Microsoft is doing. So basically, what they did, they did is they went out and spent a half a million dollars on marketing, and it's a phased marketing program. But when leads come in for the program, they're put they're pushed out to people that are regionally located to the people who who get hit back on the on the marketing campaign. I think we've already had like eight in the last couple of weeks. And it, it just, every now and then you just get a whole bunch of them. So, and they've been pretty successful. About half of the leads have turned out to be something very, very positive, so. So what do you call um, You know what, I'll have to post, I'll post a link up. I'll post a link up. I, it, the name escapes me. And the other part of it is, and I think there's still openings too, is, uh, a couple of, because uh, there's two sides to the program. There's the developer side, there's also a hosting side. Um, some of the hosting companies are providing uh, full, very large racks where you can have directed hosting. And uh, But there's only a limited number of them. But I do believe last time I checked it, I think well, it was Monday, there's still a lot of the spots left. So that adds the thing to like, if you're working, if you're just getting started, especially if you're working on an app or something like that and you don't have space, you don't have a dedicated server to work with on, you can get it. But then it's a huge boost. We haven't even figured out what we can do with the big server yet. That's the, uh, the first thing you're talking about is related to the build a better website. Oh, link that's on there. So. Sorry about that. Yeah. No, it's okay. Yeah. yeah. And it is. And we, it's a local host, too, and they've, they've been great. We back them a couple of questions because we kind of messed it up in the beginning, and they were like, right away, oh, this is no problem at all. And they, they didn't just do something, they, they explained to you what you did, kind of did wrong. So you learn from that mistake and move on. So it's, it's really great. So without further ado, Mr. Stuart Goldman, now I'm going to talk about the seven secrets of business success. Every time I see that, I get that backwards. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. No problem. Oh, 
introduce myself. Okay. <laughs> um, hello, everybody. I'm Stuart Golden, CPA. Um, my office is in Swampscott, which is north of Boston. And uh, I specialize in helping people pay the lowest amount of tax allowed by law. Uh, that said, I have a lot of individual tax clients. I have a lot of business clients that I help uh, with their uh, various uh, businesses, helping them uh, not only with their tax issues, but how to grow their businesses. Um, and my goal is to see that they succeed in business. Um, uh, first of all, I want to thank Brian for inviting me. Um, I've known Brian for a number of years now, and when we first met, um, he was at a client and he was um, kind of the de facto bookkeeper. And he just did this little web design stuff on the side, and uh, luckily for all of us, bookkeeping is in the past for him and the web stuff is up front. Um, I did want to give you all a little something to remember me by. So if you could hand out those. So the, the topic tonight is the seven secrets of business success. Um, and I'm, I'm curious as to the people here, whether they are in business for themselves or they work for others. So if we could just uh, quickly go around the room and you could tell me what your status is. Uh, I'm trying to start my own business, so I haven't started yet. Okay, but well, no you're... <laughs> <laughs> And you're working for someone else? At... No, I already quit, so. Oh, okay. So that, that has been cast. <laughs> I see. <laughs> you're on the way. And how about you? I'm Danielle McMillan. I'm with Technology Solutions. I tell our clients needs with hardware, software solutions. Okay. So you're um, with another company? Or you're with my a company? Own company? Oh, your own company? Oh, okay. And can I ask you? I'm Chris Bowen with Microsoft, and I'm here in presenter capacity tonight. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> and how about you, sir? Uh, I had a small business before, but now I'm uh, with a small company. I work for the company, and just as an employee, and I'm thinking maybe for the future about separate business, but just thinking about that. Okay. And how about you? Hi, uh, my name is Gil. Yeah, I have my own uh, small startup. Okay. And um, uh, I'm thinking of changing direction. Oh, interesting. Well, uh, as a CPA, I tend to spend a lot of time, probably like you guys do, uh, sitting at my desk doing work. So I'm kind of not used to being up in front of people and presenting. Uh, so feel free to interrupt me with questions because I, I kind of welcome the feedback. Um, and the chance to not talk endlessly. <clears throat> so to get moving with the uh, seven secrets, the first secret would be just to have a plan. You need to have a plan uh, of what you're going to do in business and certainly in life as well. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is to write down your goals. If you can develop a set of goals and have them written, uh, studies have shown that people who do that succeed uh, far more than people who don't have goals. So the first thing you want to do is write down your goals. Um, then in specific, you want to write down, you want to have your life goals as well as your goals in business. Because somewhere down the road, you're going to encounter uh, some really difficult times where you're up against the wall, up against a deadline, working late, and you're going to ask yourself, why am I here? What, why am I doing this? And if you have those goals in mind, uh, th those will help you s see you through times like that. Um, now getting down specifically to your business, you need to come up with a, a plan uh, of what your revenue and expenses are going to be in your business. So you want to have a plan for one year, two years, three years. Of how much money are you going to make? What what you're going to gross revenue from your business, um, and then what you think your expenses are, and then in the end, how much cash will you have at the end of the day? Because cash is very important in a business. Because once the cash runs out, 
you're, you're out of business. So you have to keep a careful eye on the cash to make sure that you're going to have enough uh, to get you through any day uh, and also through the year. And you have to plan that maybe sometimes uh, your customers might not pay you as quickly as they like, as you would like, and uh, you should try to have a reserve for that so that uh, you can weather that storm. Um, once you have the plan, then you have to think about, uh, it, it, it's not a stagnant plan. You, you, you create it in, in um, one period of time, but it's a plan that's going to last you for you know, years to come. So you're going to have to review that plan on a regular basis. You can review it annually. Some people would sit down and review that plan every week. For example, you could come up each Monday morning and take the first hour of the week, of your work week, and review your plan. And that is, you have a, um, a criteria for your business that, of certain things that you like to, to look at and, and keep in mind. Uh, for example, uh, what projects are you working on and are they successful? And uh, what should you start to get new projects uh, what should you stop that's, that's not helping you out? Um, and perhaps a quick overview of your finances. Um, so that can be done as often as each week, so to keep you on track. But the important thing is to remain on track. Uh, part of your plan might also involve, you're going to have a, a main uh, core business, but you might also have an additional source of revenue because that can be helpful to have more than one stream of income. Um, if you can develop alternative sources of income, that can greatly boost your business and increase your chances of success. Um, so for example, in your line of work, you might have, uh, your main line of work might be creating websites, but then you also might have um, sell something else to your clients, such as a service agreement, so that they're paying you a certain amount every month, um, so that you will keep uh, an eye on their website and make any changes that might be necessary. So this will guarantee you a, a steady source of income every month without actually having to do a lot of work and without actually having to uh, go out and find new business because you're generating additional income from your current client. Another part of your plan should be that should involve fun. You want to make sure that you're going to enjoy what you're doing because once again if you hit the rough spots if you don't really enjoy what you're doing uh, it can impact your health, it can impact um, your business and, and knock it down. It's, it's possible you can work really hard on your business, put everything you have into it, and actually burn yourself out because you're just working too hard. There should be some enjoyment in your business and that should be part of your plan. Yes? Okay, now this is a good question, especially because you're an accountant and you have the heavy workload at a certain time of the year, something like that. Yeah. How do you balance, what, what do you find the balance for your, your fund, for your non-office activities? Well, sometimes what I do is mix chores with, um, try to have fun in doing chores that aren't work related, such as walking the dog. So if I'm walking the dog, which I do quite often because dogs need regular exercise and other things, um, then I try to enjoy what I'm doing with the dog. Um, having fun playing with him, um, enjoying being outside, away from my computer, things like that, that you look at as being fun and think about as being enjoyable. And they become enjoyable if you look for things, uh, the positive aspects of it. Okay, so once you have a plan, um, it's important to measure your results because you're going to have results as, as your business progresses 
and you want to be able to measure them. That is the second secret. Um, and of course, when we're talking about a business and what a business does, it uh, has transactions. So you have to record those transactions in such a way that you can look at your records and see that and understand them. So that involves having good accounting records. Um, and that is a key to business success is making sure that your records are up to date. Uh, you know, you don't want a, a month to go by without updating your records for transactions that have happened. You want to reconcile your bank account every month. And, you know, it doesn't have to be you. You don't have to do it. You can hire someone to do it, a bookkeeper. But you want to have accounting records that are up to date, that make sense for your business, and that you understand. You should understand what those records mean. There's, there should be a balance sheet that shows you where you're at, what your assets are, what your liabilities are. Then you have an income statement. The income statement has your revenues, has your expenses, and your bottom line. So when a month goes by, uh, it might feel like a good month, it might feel like a bad month, but if you go and check your uh, profit and loss statement, you should be able to tell, yes, it was a good month, I'm on target, I'm with the budget, or no, this was a bad month, and maybe I should do, uh, think about cutting some certain costs that have gotten out of line, or what can I do to increase revenues. And having a budget is very important. That, was, uh, that's, that should be part of the plan. Um, so each month you should budget for a certain amount of income, certain amount of expenses, and hopefully then you can compare your results and make sure you're, you are following the budget. Uh, if you are not adhering to the budget, if things are getting out of control, uh, your business is going to quickly spin out of control and may eventually die. Uh, in looking at your revenues, it's very important to consider your pricing strategies. Um, it's, it can be that you enjoy working with certain clients and um, you enjoy what you do and you're thinking well I don't want to charge them a lot of money because I want them to come with me I want them to be happy but ultimately if you're not charging enough money uh, again that's not going to help you succeed and the last part of, uh, of looking at your results of course is controlling your expenses uh, when, when times are good, you want to make sure that you're putting some money aside that uh, if you have it to build up a cash reserve. And when times are bad, you want to maybe cut back on some expenses. But at all times, you want to make sure the expenses, you're not being uh, imprudent with your spending. Because just because you're the boss and you can buy whatever you want, uh, you just can't uh, uh, go off and um, spend all your profits because you'll need that money sooner or later. The next thing you want to do, the next uh, success secret I will offer is, is you want to get some good advisors. Certainly you want to have an accountant like me or someone you would trust to create good accounting records for you, uh, advise you on um, tax strategies and, and general business strategies. You also want to have a, a good attorney because there's legal aspects of every business and you want to make sure that you don't uh, stray away from those. Um, and lastly, you might think about a, a business consultant that who can help you grow your business uh, when you're at a certain level can maybe help you take it to the next level. This could be uh, a general business advisor, it could be a business coach, it could be an expert in your area. There are uh, people available through the SBA 
the, the government offers. They have a very good website, and that all their services are free. There's also the uh, SCORE, Service Corps of Retired Executives, who are available to consult with. Um, and usually for any industry, there are coaches who, who can help you, uh, who understand your industry inside and out. Though they, if you get a good coach, he's gonna, he or she will charge you um, a fair fee for their services. The next thing you want to do in business is to develop a marketing strategy. It's not enough to go out and hang out your shingle and um, expect uh, people to beat a path to your door. You have to let people know that you're out there and let them know what you can do. Uh, one way to do this is to go to networking events and certainly this is an example of a good networking event uh, where you can meet people in your industry and maybe people outside your industry and uh, get to know them and uh, develop your contacts. Another place you might consider going is the, your local chamber of commerce. They have regular events with uh, a variety of business people and at these events you get to uh, mingle with people and uh, make some good contacts. There's also uh, regular business forums that are held throughout the area. Uh, that's another place where business people gather. And here's kind of an offbeat suggestion is that you might want to teach an adult education course. And this is a, this is a marketing tool that actually pays you. You are, you are paid to market to people. Because if you were to teach a course in web design, um, you would get paid for that. You would be standing in front of people and be perceived as the expert in web design. And your goal really is to not so much instruct people, but to explain to people that web design is very difficult and they should hire an expert such as yourself. Uh, there are other marketing methods such as the internet, which I'm sure you're all aware of and, and you're all doing uh, by having websites. Uh, there's more traditional methods which, uh, such as direct mail, where you'd send, uh, get a mailing list of uh, various businesses and send out flyers or letters or postcards or something to announce who you are and what you do. Uh, and you can even follow up with telephone calls and um, see if there's any interest. Uh, there's one free method that, that's really good and that's to issue a press release. If you, um, people in business issue press releases all the time, such as tonight, um, I'm speaking in front of you, I can um, issue a press release to my local Swampscott newspaper and tell them um, Stuart Golden spoke in front of a um, uh, meetup group in Cambridge about the seven secrets of business success. And if it's a slow business day, uh, it's quite possible that that could make its way into the, the local newspaper. People read that and say, oh, Stuart Goldman, he's, he's an expert. He's talking in front of people. Uh, and if you have similar things, if you attend courses, local web expert um, attends course in, in WebSpark and uh, learns such and such. So I obviously don't know what WebSpark is. Pretty good at So uh, press releases are you know, thought of by more established traditional businesses, but actually anyone can do it. And those pieces do get picked up because newspapers need, need news to put out there. And they'll put your name out there. All these methods are, are geared towards one thing, which is to try to get your name out in the public and also to have yourself seen as, a, as an expert. 
because whether you realize it or not, no matter what your level of expertise is, you are experts in what you do. And people need what you do, and they will pay you for it. And you just have to get the word out, and you have to present yourself as that expert. And then people will come to you and um, hire you to, for the services they need. Um, <clears throat> The bottom line in, in getting business through marketing is that there generally isn't one way to get hundreds of clients. How it works is that there are many ways to get one client. And what you need to do is to utilize all the different methods that you can think of to market yourself and, and bring in the clients. Moving on, another um, secret to web to uh, business success is to stay current in your industry. You want to uh, have your skills at their sharpest level possible. So that's by coming to forums like this, by um, engaging in continuing education, um, uh, going online and doing research, whatever it takes. It's not just about sitting there doing the work. It's constantly keeping yourself up to date uh, on top of your game. And in, in part of being an expert in your industry is you have to keep current with all the trends that are in your industry. It's not just the skills, it's also what's happening in your industry, where it's going, where it's heading. Um, and to do that, there are, there are journals to read, there's online articles, um, you can get into news groups. Okay, um, moving on. Uh, <clears throat> another thing in business that's really important and which is right up my alley is taxes. You have to be aware of taxes um, and, and be in compliance with the tax laws. And there are federal tax laws, there's state tax laws, there's local tax laws. And if you're not in compliance, there are agencies that will come down on you. And uh, the most um, common agency you'll encounter, of course, is the IRS, followed by the Massachusetts Department of Revenue. And I've had many clients who, um, I wouldn't say many clients, but some clients who've come to me who have problems with the IRS and um, they, they just didn't realize what they needed to do. In particular, I've been dealing recently with a client who is a daycare provider, and she thought it was enough just to um, keep track of her income expenses, file her tax returns. Then she got audited by the IRS. The IRS um, called her into their office in Boston, and uh, they asked her to bring all her receipts for three years. Now, in the daycare industry, she's got a lot of expenses. She, she's buying food all the time for the kids. She's buying toys for them, supplies. There, there's a lot of expenses. There's, um, she does it in her home, so all her home expenses, some of them can be used in daycare. So she had a lot of receipts. She had so many receipts that she had big trash bags full of receipts. And she thought, there's just no way I can bring all these into the IRS. So she went into the office in Boston with no receipts at all. And the IRS was not happy about this. So what they did is they denied all her deductions. And they did this for three years. So uh, she ended up owing a huge tax and, um, and was unable to pay it. So. Um, first thing they did was they ended up um, taking away some of her income because she's paid through a state agency and they can go into the state agency and, and what they call levy her income. They also, because of that, she lost her car. Uh, they took her bank account. They can go in and take her bank account. And then they turned around and they uh, told the Mass Department of Revenue that they had changed her income for those three years. 
So then the Mass Department of Revenue sends her a rather large bill. So at this point, um, she's trying to put together her expenses and her receipts and trying to fight them, but it's a real uphill battle. And she doesn't know whether or not she's gonna remain in business. And of course, I'm trying to help her, but um, as I say, it's an uphill battle. So you want to avoid having situations like that. You want to stay in compliance. So staying in compliance means you want to file all your, your current forms. That's your, there could be a business tax return. Certainly you have a personal tax return. There might be payroll taxes. Um, there's annual filings with the Secretary of State. And another one is to, if you hire someone and pay them more than $600 a year, you have to send them a 1099. If you don't send them a 1099 and you are audited, the IRS can uh, assess you penalties of $50 per unfiled 1099. And if they feel that it's willful, they can extend that to $50 per month that the form is not filed. And something like that can pretty quickly uh, put you out of business. So it's, it's essential uh, that you hire a good tax advisor to keep you um, out of trouble with the IRS, Mass Department of Revenue, um, and um, it's uh, lost my train of thought, but it's very important uh, to make sure that your taxes are filed and you have someone to help you with that. Yes. All right. So I kind of sort of know the answer to this question, but I know okay. This. Now, most CPAs are all, are not; they're just regular accountants. They're not taxation specialists, so there's a difference in the two. Yes, uh, it it can depend. Most CPAs who are in public practice. Um, do taxes. A lot of the bigger firms focus on businesses, so they don't want to deal with small businesses or individual clients. They want bigger businesses. The smaller firms and solo practitioners, and I'm a solo practitioner, uh, specialize mostly in helping individuals and small businesses. And of course, uh, one of their number one concerns is taxes, so that's, that's a main area of my practice. And we're, we're at the last secret, and this is perhaps the most important one and may shock you, and that is eventually in your business, you want to fire yourself. And that means that you don't want to be doing all the work in your business. Ultimately, you want to hire someone to do the work while you do the marketing, you bring in the business, you supervise your employees. So to do this, you need to develop systems within your business to um, of processes that uh, get the work done and that are uh, able to be translated to other people. So it's not just you sitting down designing a website. It's a process for designing a website that you can bring anyone in to show them how to do it, and they can do it with some oversight from you. The, the key here is that when you're doing the work yourself, you're, you're doing what's called manual labor. Manual labor is the same thing as if you went out and dug a ditch, and that's what you did for work, because you're very limited in what you can earn when it's your time doing the work. So if you were gonna go out and dig a ditch, you could only charge so much an hour, you could only dig for so long, your income is capped. It's the same thing with building a website. Uh, there's only so many hours you can put into it, and there's only so many hours uh, that you can build to your clients. And that's it, once you, you hit that wall, your income is capped, you can't do any more. But if you can bring in people to, to do it for you, then, your income can grow exponentially. <coughs> and that, that's a key to ultimately succeeding in business 
is that should be your ultimate goal is that the business can run without you that websites can be designed while you're on vacation or you're sitting at the beach and just calling into the office every now and again and the business is making money and money is flowing to you but you're not doing the work and then ultimately your exit strategy is that you're going to leave, have a business that you can sell to someone and that's your retirement right there and on that note i'm done have you fired yourself yet not yet okay. we're working on it <laughs> thank you very much sir. thanks Bob. Thank actually first question uh, sure uh it's actually it's what's uh, very important it's related to your last kind of uh, magic whatever like item all right uh, so if you if you have a business and you hire people you your income increases exponentially but if you working as a solo you have a limit right, right. why would you why do you work so i or i think to hire someone else or well i have hired someone recently okay my business um i worked for other people for a long time so my business is really fairly young <laughs> So I'm just kind of building it up, and I'm going to be uh, just hired someone and hopefully start to, to grow from there. Okay, anybody else? Okay. I haven't met the new person yet. No, you haven't. No, and, and on that last point, too, I should add this too, me and Stuart both share an experience with, with a company. Um, it's also very important that you have a good employee. There's a company that we both happen to be at at the same time. Something happened to the president of the company. It was medically related. The company had, just like you were talking about, you had to create systems. The company did not have any systems, and the vice president was shaky, and nobody could step up and really take the place, and eventually the company fell. It was kind of very sad. It was a very long-standing structural engineering company in Boston. It was kind of, I still run across their name all the time. It's also on the associate. I kind of smiled, and then, Right after I remember, because I was actually technically the last employee in that company because I closed the company down. And uh, it was uh, it's kind of sad to run across that name still. But uh, it's a huge lesson, and sometimes you think you have experts that know, have learned the lesson, but be surprised. President Atau, who was in front of Congress today, he made a mistake. He just kept growing. He didn't put it out fast enough. So. Now, Chris and jQuery. So if anybody wants to grab any pizza or anything, uh, in, in case any of you didn't know, you can grab something to drink from the uh, kitchen area. Okay, it'll take me a minute to uh, switch.